All right, we're live. So the, the, the first time that I, I can only recall that this happened to us where we had to do a part two was with the scroll saw scribbler. Um, but you said that no, it, there's been other occasions, JP? Yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure there has been. I, oh. can't, I, can't, I can't remember who it was, to be honest. But it's going to bug me now, so I'm going to have to go back and look. Yeah, I think it was just the uh, the scroll saw scribbler. So what happened was, guys, for you guys coming in right now, um, it looks like my the Google decided to update where now it's got, you know, the tabs are now quite rectangular as opposed to before. Now I forget because once they change something up, I'm automatically looking at whatever the new thing is, and I forget the past right automatically. But um, <laughs> it did that. And since Doc... You know, since Doc, JP, and Dave were in this live, but I was the guy with the control, once I shut down, YouTube said, oh, okay, session over, see ya, we're done. And so that's what went down. Um, the last time we did a part two, uh, we ended up bringing in some, some folks at the end. And if you guys don't mind, I would like to bring in a couple of CNCers um, at the end here, if that's okay. Does anybody object to that? I'm, I'm okay with do whatever you want. I'm just not hanging out on the show with them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like uh, getting bitten by a blooming cobra. You okay. do realize I'm a blooming uh, scroll sawer. It's not frying me to tigers. <laughs> <laughs> and they look, they even wear orange. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, when we la last left off, I got sent into the, you know, purgatory of internet failure. So, I don't know. Did you guys get to a ask the questions to Dave from the chat? Uh, there was uh, there was one question from Matt Huss of Awesome Wood Things. Uh, I don't know if he's still running the Awesome Fun Things channel. I presume he is. Yeah. Um, but the, the question he had was, uh, CNC is made with metal or wood. Which is best, like the pros and cons? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm asked that all the time because I have the garage horse, which is made out of steel, and then I have the, the cat and CNC, which is made out of plywood. Uh, there's pros and cons to both of them. The Actually, a lot of people don't realize that this, the steel one that I sell is designed as a smaller benchtop model, and it's designed to use a compact style router like the DeWalt. 611 or the Porter Cable 450, something like that. Whereas the Gatton with plywood, you can build it pretty much, with, I mean, within reason, you can build it, uh, you know, a lot bigger than the plans or a lot smaller than the plans. And like I said, I'm running a big, heavy 2.2 uh, kilowatt water-cooled spindle on mine. So um, as far as dollars, you probably the Gatton CNC is probably more bang for the buck, except, you know, a lot of people, I think, have this thing about plywood. There's this misconception that it's not going to be as strong as the steel. And, you know, I've done videos where I'm sitting on the gantry riding the thing and tried to put that myth to rest. But I know some people are still hung up thinking that steel's got to be stronger than, than the plywood. I have another uh, question from the chat here. I'll go on, Mike. Uh, sorry there, JP. Uh, Dan Haru of the Country Bed Shop again. He wanted to know, how comes uh, most CNCs are square? Can you do a long bed just as easy as you do a short one, like a 2 by 8 instead of a 4 by 4 uh, Yeah, you can. I think the reason I like to make them either square or I like to make them wider than they are deep. And the reason for that is when you're when you're watching something run on the CNC, if you if y'all remember from back in school, your Cartesian coordinates, you know, X is this way and Y is always this way. So if you make them make a machine that's the other way around, 
when you're standing right in front of the machine watching what's cut, you always got to turn your head 90 degrees because it's usually programmed the other way. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, I, I, when I first started, one of the reasons my little CNC thing took off was I had this crazy idea that I would make one any size anybody wanted. Uh, and that's the old sidewinder, the metal ones. Um, and I used to get guys that they wanted something narrow, you know, skinny and, and long because they were doing guitar stuff. Uh, they wanted one long enough to do bass guitar necks and stuff like that, but they didn't care how wide it was. You know, it didn't, you know, it could only be wide enough for a guitar body. And, and I used to do one off machines like that. Um, I don't anymore cause it's, it's just not profitable these days. But at the time I had a fabricator that would, you know, that I was in good with and he would make one set of parts for a machine without a, a huge market. Now I have to buy like 20, 20 sets of parts for 20 machines to get a decent uh, price break on them. So I hope, I hope that answers your question, Daniel. Uh, the other thing is too, I might add that when you've got a long skinny machine and if they're, if you've got whatever it is, driving it on the side, whether it's belts, lead screws, rack and pinion, whatever, uh, it's always easier uh, to stand in the front if it's a big wide machine than to, than to have to lean over those lead screws or like I said, a rack and pinion or whatever you might have. Um, Ashley from Chip Bill says, she has, I want to make a noise reducing case for my CNC. Have you done that? I have not made a complete enclosure for sound. Uh, Javi has one on his cam master that cuts the sound way down. Uh, I had one kind of a three-sided thing, uh, but it was more to keep the dust and the chips from just flying all over the shop. It kind of kept it, like whenever I was running it, I would just take a piece of cardboard and prop it up in front uh, and, and use it that way. And it kept all the dust right there around the table, uh, but it didn't do anything for the noise. You have to enclose it uh all the could way you, really could you put like um like egg boxes or something like that like they do in studios say that again you know like uh, music studios they have like uh, like cones on the walls and things no, like that no jp but do you, know, do you know what i'm talking about i've not on the inside yeah box. like the egg carton type walls no but those are the cheapy those are the cheapy studios they say hey you know when grandma finishes all the eggs yeah yeah that's what i'm they, saying obviously you don't want to put decent phone because it'll get blocked up with sawdust but could you do that put that, that sort of thing inside or even cut uh freely carve some for foam, the inside foam the absorption box. sound absorption like foam and stuff yeah, put that on the inside of the box or something like that. Yeah. The, the foam would probably work well to reduce the sound, but if somebody mentioned it, the dust would fill it up after a while. I, I wouldn't want to use anything like that. Just closing it up with something solid, you'd be surprised how much you reduce the noise of that router just by having, you know, if you just took wood and closed it up or even Lexan, uh, you know, it, it really cuts down the sound. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, offer a um, supplemental kit with egg cartons from Publix over here? We no, I didn't, I didn't mean the pro ones. I mean, some <laughs> people like in their home studios. <laughs> no, but I'm well, going to... I mean, I've only ever really seen it like, when I was younger, a, a home studio that my friends had made. And they had egg cartons all over the wall. Yeah, if, if you <laughs> if you spray down the router, it'll stop making noise. Because, boy, they're loud as hell. If you if you just wash it, it you know down it, it it'll it'll quit. Yeah. <laughs> Are we good uh, with questions? Uh, I think there was a follow up from Matt Haas. I'm just quickly trying to find it. I think he just said he. Oh, there you go. A question follow up. He goes, "Oh, it's not really a question." He goes, "I'm just looking to make small gears." So that was a follow-up from his question about the metal or wood, which is best, pros or cons. Oh well, is he what kind of gear? If he's wanting to mill like aluminum or something, I always tell people, you know, these CNC routers, you can mill aluminum, but if your primary 
material is going to be aluminum or some type of metal, you're better off to get a CNC mill versus a CNC router because that's what those are designed to do. All right, so we're good yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions from Doc to Dave or from you, JP, before we continue? No, I think uh, I'm all caught up at this time. Yeah, that's it for the time being. Okay, so um, so I'll ask the, this question, sort of kind of getting away from the CNC for half a second. Um, uh, earlier, I don't know if you said it on live or you said it in the pre-show bit, um, but you had mentioned that you'd been, and Mark Lindsay, by the way, mentioned that you you do cigar box and, uh, guitars as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you were, and that, that's a fact, yeah? Well, I don't consider myself a builder like 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 we were talking before we went live uh, tonight. I, this this past Saturday, I didn't do my show because they had the uh, Georgia International Cigar Box Guitar Festival here in in McDonough, and they have vendors from neighboring. We had one guy come all the way from uh, Wisconsin, I think, as a vendor. And, and those are the true builders. That's what they do. They build them all the time and they sell them and all that. I, I've built uh, a few of them. I give most of them away. I got a couple hanging on my uh, wall in the other room. Uh, I just build them kind of for fun. Uh, I, I, they're just a ton of fun uh, to build because when you get a cigar box, you know, it's going to be different you know, most likely it'll be a different size or shape than the last one you built. So everything is custom and just being able to take, whether you're making a three, four, six string, whatever it might be, just to take an old, something like a cigar box and, you know, put a uh, uh, pickup in it and, and the jack and the toner, uh, tone and volume knobs and all that stuff. And then strum it for the first time. It's like, it's unbelievable the sound that comes out of those things, you know? Um, and I, I've, I've always enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm kind of inspired a little bit after going to that, that festival this past weekend, I'd like to, to start, but I've got a ton of cigar boxes out there uh, that have just been sitting around. I've got pickups. I've got, got a bunch of parts I've accumulated and then ran out of time because of my the other stuff I do um, where I just ha haven't done it, but I'm hoping that, uh, either things will slow down or I'll just have to figure out a way to make time to, uh, to build them. Cause they're just a ton of fun. And I just had an absolute blast at that, uh, that festival this past, um, past Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday. And if anybody wants to check, uh, you know, I'll give myself a shameless plug here. If you go to my YouTube channel, I'm putting together, I shot, uh, I took my video camera and I shot a ton of video. I've got almost every song that every artist did when they were performing on the stage. And I'm slowly putting together a playlist of uh, all the stuff from the, from that cigar box festival. So right now I think I've got 11 or 12 videos up, but you can go check them out. John Nichols was there. Travis Bolan was there. Sky page, uh, Dar, um, Stella Bata, uh, just just a lot of good folks that really make those things make those things sing. So nice. Now, so you have these kits that that you sell, and, and I'm not other than what what I see since I, I am devoid of CNC uh, knowledge, except what I hear from Javi, Mark, yourself, and you know other people. Uh, Chip Build is out there. Ashley, she has a CNC. There's Patrick as well. Patrick's workshop, a lot of people, um, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that it, it could be very useful for them. Uh, they don't have the CNC. They don't have, you know, um, sort of, they're, they're not, they, they don't have the experience with, they don't know what to expect and all that. And you do offer, you have a show on your channel. We've mentioned it here before where you go into the specifics, but you have a lot of people that have been, doing it for a while and then they're asking very very technical questions and all that for a beginner a person getting in your kit what you offer the, 
give us a little bit of that, you know, the way you, you, you explain it so that we know. Well, um, I think the biggest reason I've been successful doing the, the CNC thing is, um, and if we can just step back just for a, a brief minute here, uh, back in 2000, I think it was January 2014, I was doing it out in my shop. I was shooting a YouTube video, making some uh, key-shaped uh, key holder. Um, and, you know, I had all the time when, you, when you're doing these YouTube videos, if you use the CNC, even for the small part of that project, you always get people that are like, oh, yeah, that's easy. you got a CNC, blah, blah, blah. Well, at the end of that video where I made that key holder, I had just about had it with all the, the hater comments. And I, I said, look, you know, if there's anybody out there that would like me to do a series showing you how to build a CNC, I go, if, if you're smart enough to be able to turn on your computer and watch this YouTube video right now, you're smart enough to run a CNC. So I just said, hey, you know, if you want to see me do this series, leave a comment below or send me an email or whatever. And man, right after that, my email blew up and, and all that. So to make a long story short, um, that's, I think that's kind of why I'm so successful is I've actually showed people that you don't have to be super smart. I mean, look at me, I don't know anything about electronics, but I've been doing CNC's for a long time. I've learned a little bit along the way but I still don't know that much about electronics and you don't have to because there's other people that do that make the stuff for you. Uh, you just have to know what to buy and what to do. And I've done all that research. I lay it out in my plans. I've got every little nut bolt washer, you name it all linked in with the plan. So people can get my plans and you know, they don't have to do any thinking other than just buy the stuff that, that's right there in front of them you and, know, and the plan access. show them how to put it together. That, that does give them access to uh, a group, right? Or no, that you have. Yeah. I mean, and it's not a requirement uh, to have a Gatton CNC to be in the Gatton CNC Facebook group or in the forum or anything like that. Uh, you know, anybody's welcome. I do rem remind people that my Facebook groups, are different than a lot of your typical CNC Facebook groups. They're not a general CNC Facebook group. So in other words, if you've got a, let's just say XYZ CNC and you want to join my group, you're welcome to join the group, but it's not about XYZ CNC. You need to go post that stuff over in the XYZ CNC Facebook group. Mine is, is all for the people that want to learn about the GATT and CNCs and need help with their GATT and CNCs. I've got a, you know, again, one of my, the things probably I'm most proud of is the little community, the tight knit community that we have of GATT and CNC users, same way with the garage work CNC. Uh, they are the best tech support team anybody could ever have. Cause if somebody has a problem, they post a question on Facebook, and nine times out of 10, before I even see it, somebody or half a dozen other people have already helped them. Uh, so that's why I try to keep my groups specific to Gatton CNC and, and the other group is, is Garage Work CNC and not include all that other stuff. Cause I know a lot, I've, I've been members of some of the other CNC groups and you'll have everything from uh, a little hobby machine all the way up to somebody who just runs one at where they work or something, you know, some quarter million dollar machine. And so you get a lot of attitudes and egos and stuff like that. And usually I end up leaving those groups because you can't, you know, I didn't, you know that's not what I'm about. I'm about help, trying to help people get into CNC that, you know, that thought they never could. That's, so, that's what I've been doing for years. So, um, in the description, I have all the links where they can find you from your site um, to your Facebook, YouTube. So if you guys, and and after the fact, if you uh, run into this and are interested, you could go and check out all the information. Uh, and for our friends that uh, know they could learn more, you know, we, we know each other. 
Um, let me ask you this question. Um, what is Dave Gatton's life philosophy? Uh, can you give us what's your, you know, the way you look at things? It's a broad question. Whatever you want to offer to us, what's, what's Dave Gatton's life philosophy? Well, um, you, you know, as you get older, things, you know, kind of change. It's probably much different than it was when I was 30 or something. But, you know, I just kind of take one day at a time now. Uh, like I said, for the, the CNC thing for me, it's, yeah, I make money at it. But, I mean, anybody knows me. Javi's been here to my house. He knows how I live. I don't live in a big fancy house. I don't have big fancy cars. I'm a very simple guy. And to me, it's more about, uh, like I said, helping people get into CNC that, that never thought they could. Then, it, you know, it's more about that than it is making money. Yeah, I got I to gotta eat and stuff like that. But I sell, you know, I sell plans and a lot of other things beside the, the CNC thing. So, um, yeah, it's it, that, that's kind of my philosophy. I, I, you know, anybody that wants a CNC, I want them to have one. Uh, I've given away a lot of CNC kits, you know, some, you know, nobody even knows how many for sure I've given away except me. Uh, because if somebody, if I really think somebody wa wants one and they just have, you know, that little, they're just a little bit leery about it and they're afraid to spend the money that it won't work out. I thought, well, let me just give them this kit to get them started. And, you know, maybe they'll build it. Maybe they don't. But, uh, but I've done a, a lot of times. I've given away a lot of them on my show and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I just hate for anybody. And I, and I think it's changing. Uh, you know, I mean, you look around on YouTube, there were woodworkers that, you know, five or 10 years ago would have never had a CNC in their shop. And now they've got one. Uh, maybe not my, one of mine, but you know, CNC is really evolving and it's, it's people are finally the, the, the tide is kind of turning a little bit. It's not so much, uh, well, that's not real woodworking. Now people are finally realizing like, hey, I could put something over there on the CNC, hit the button, and then I could go over here and set up my scroll saw and scroll something or turn on the lathe or, you know, it's just like having another helper in your shop, really. All right. So one, one of the, before before we uh, kind of um, uh, end the show, do whatever you're going to do, Eloy, one of the things that I heard once, and I, I think, yeah, it was Tim Sway that said it, I think, was he was kind of one of the guys that never really had a CNC, never showed an interest in CNC at all. And obviously he has now got a CNC in his shop. Um, I'm not sure what one it is he's got, to be honest, if I'm sure. Um, but I think one of the reasons why he started off getting a CNC was is he didn't want to deny the fact that obviously he's got his boy in his workshop with him and the CNC is kind of the next generation of tools that's up and coming. You know, that's kind of, you, you've got your hand tools. Yes, they'll always be there. And you've got your, your normal power tools, like your table saw and your planes and all that, uh, uh, power planes and all that sort of stuff. But CNC is kind of the future as well. Do you know what I mean? As well as laser cutters and, all that sort of stuff. And he didn't want to deprive Vance of knowing that, you know, so that's kind of how that kind of started. And it, yeah, it's funny you mentioned him JP, cause he's probably the last person you would think would have a CNC. Exactly. Shop. Exactly. So, I mean, if, if Tim Sway could be swayed, funny, I was swayed. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> I guess anyone can. So, yeah, obviously we give CNCs people a lot of crap, but, I mean, yes, they deserve it, but there you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I've been hearing no, it for so long, it doesn't even bother me anymore. I'm like, yeah. hey, if you don't want to do it, it's fine with me. No, I, mean, I, I always like to tease the, the scroll saw people, and I see we've got a few out there in the chat tonight. But, you know, when they'll say, well, I could do that on my scroll saw, you know, probably faster than you could on your CNC. And I always say, I, my comeback is always, yeah, but can you eat a sandwich while you're doing it? I can. <laughs> I could probably cook because I could do it one-handed. So um, we're going to welcome Javi in here. And right after, I want to do 
the lightning round on with Dave here of questions. Just a barrage of questions. You have to answer them quick. See what you say, and then we'll we'll get into a a little conversation here. And um, and actually, let me ask you: Have you enjoyed the show this evening, Dave? I have. I have. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, even with the hiccups, and the hiccup didn't bother me because, like I said. Yeah, I've been done shows for a long time and had the same. In fact, they used to joke they'd call it the CNC without Dave show because it seemed like every week my computer would have problems and I'd disappear. And maybe uh, you brought this over from those days. Yeah, yeah, it's a curse, I guess. So awesome, dude. Well, look, I, I appreciate you doing this. Um, and so, will you come back and and say hey and and do it absolutely, again? Absolutely, absolutely, anytime. Okay. All right, so Javi, welcome to the show, dude. Why, right, thank you, Eloy. Hey, Dave. Javi, good Dave. evening, Mr. Uswara. Good evening. You have a, a you built a recently. You well, tell everybody. You know, introduce yourself to everybody there, although they know you, but. Uh, pretty much with this crowd, yeah, they pretty much know me. It's a uh, my name's uh, Javier Unzueta, uh Javi's Wood Shop on uh, YouTube, and uh, yeah. Um, Yes, I built one of uh, Dave's uh, machines. It's it's funny because uh, I tell this story every now and then. A few years ago, back, uh, I think it was 2012, something like that, I um, I I looked up Dave and I looked up the, uh, I, was, I was looking up the, the uh, I was thinking of either buying one pre-built, a CNC, or build one. And, uh, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And I was afraid that I didn't have the skills to build one. So I ended up spending, well, I had the money burning a hole in my pocket, but I ended up spending almost 10 grand on a, on, on the cam master. Uh, it was only years later when, when, uh, after getting into it so much that I got very comfortable with CNC, I met Dave and, and everything. I purchased one of his, um, uh, recently a year or two ago. And, uh, to build a bigger unit, uh, and, and mounted it on the wall. And it was, it had to be the easiest thing in the world. I regret my decision years ago. Cause I mean, if I would, if I knew then what I know now, it's, it's so simple to build. I have a couple of things and bear with me. So I have a couple of things. So the first thing is, um, you have, you've built recently and I went to pick up, you know, the metal with you, uh, down to, was it Doral or Hialeah? I forget. It was Doral. Uh, you and I, Javi, we went down there. You built a Gatton, but you decided to do sort of a really neat thing yep. where it climbs up the wall. Give us a brief thing because I also have uh, a question for Dave about with, you. With me, everything's about space and, and lack thereof. I wanted to build a, a CNC that could handle a six-foot wide board. Um, I just had an idea of building an arcade cabinet and, and some other stuff. And I felt there's some practical. Yeah. And at the time I actually had a, a use for it. That use went away, but so I didn't, I had just so much space in the shop because, and I'm trying to save on, on space. So I decided to design a little, a vertical an adjustable. It basically goes from vertical to, uh, any degree in between to just about almost fully horizontal. Will uh, it sorry, run, from will horizontal it, to almost fully vertical. Will it, run, will it run? It will run in both. It has run in both directions. Okay. Uh, I am, I've, I've been so busy with, well, my other project now that, that I haven't had uh, time to finish putting the weights on. So it'll run efficiently. I can run it extremely slow, like at 50 inches per minute. I could run it vertically. It'll run normal horizontally but vertically it'll run very very slow because if not because of the because it is 70 or 80 pounds that these motors have to push going down is easy going up is a little bit harder as soon as i put the counterweights it'll be a piece of cake so dave my question is like knowing what javi did you know using the gatton built it to the size he did and the, so your kits are one could build it to what size if you have a small space can you do i mean what can you tell us about that fully adaptable 
Yeah, it's, uh, as Ivy said, it's fully adaptable because the, the parts that you get in the kit are the, the 21 parts that make up the gantry, the uprights, that kind of thing. But the actual cross member uh, is nothing but a simple rectangle piece of plywood. And it's all designed that way intentionally so that I don't have to ship a big, long piece. The end user can then decide by looking at the plans uh, you know, they can say, well, I want to make it 12 inches wider. So they just simply add 12 inches to the dimension that's already on the plans. And then they cut that piece accordingly. Uh, so it's, uh, and again, that's, that's really what's made that Gatton CNC so popular is people get the plans and then they realize like, oh, well, I don't have to build it that big or gosh, these lead screws come six foot. I'll just not cut them and make it six foot wide or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's very, very, very well designed. Uh, there have been some people I remember that uh, someone once said, Oh, I'm going to put some ribs inside the box and this and that. Well, I built it per Dave specs, seven except a longer, seven feet long. And there is a photo out there somewhere on my Facebook page where a 265 pound man is standing right in the middle of the uh, of the gantry while it's moving back and forth. So oh, I've not seen that. Yeah, I that one. That's a, one of the first pictures I took when I when I built it. Oh, it, it's a picture. Okay, you should it's have done it video wise. That'd be awesome. Oh, I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> um. Okay. So listen. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, um, so you know the. Let's complete Quentin Tarantino here for you, Dave. Uh, we're rounding home, but Quentin Tarantino style. The Beatles, um, would were big time, right? And they would be asked questions interviewed and the questions would always pop up the silliest things like oh so are those wigs on your head uh, head um uh, who what's your favorite you know color oh, uh, what's this what's this? just ridiculously think but the beauty of that simplicity juxtaposed with the coolness of all the things that they did was that you have this very you know um warm sort of look back into the lives of these people that were doing these things at that time. And so we're going to lightning ask you some questions. Um, are you ready? I guess. Favorite <laughs> color? Uh, safety orange. <laughs> I knew that one. <laughs> Favorite band ever? Uh, I'd, I'd have to just say currently Blackberry Smoke. I have too many, you know, because like I said, I have a diverse taste in music. So there, there is no true favorite, but currently Blackberry Smoke. Team Scroll Saw or Team Router? Uh, <laughs> uh, Jamie's looking at me with those, uh, that look. Uh, I, I, well, like I said, I can put something on my CNC, and if you watch my video a couple of weeks ago, I made a, that scroll saw stand from Steve Carmichael's plans, and I have my scroll saw now around here in my garage so that I can scroll while my CNC is running. So I'll have to split down the middle on that one. Oh, you were you wiggled out of that yeah. one, dude. Uh, yeah, you know, like a politician, you got to... <laughs> Jamie, I know you have one one that you always use. Uh, so, can you ask that one? No, because that's for the podcast. Oh, oh, oh! You can. Boxers oh, I can't. Or, boxers or briefs? Boxers. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Good choice, dude. <laughs> what do you expect me to say? Tidy whities or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's one that JP always uses for his podcast, and it's just it's funny as hell. Um, no, dude, so look, I, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to have a little, if there's any uh, interaction here, Javi, you guys, we'll, we're just going to ease on out from the show. So just want to thank you, all of you guys, for, for hanging out. Dave, can you, anything you'd like, anybody you'd like to shout out? Anything. Um. I can't think of any uh, anybody. I mean, I just I just like to to thank all the folks that have supported me uh, over the years. Uh, you know, especially when I started the Gatton CNC thing, uh, that that all 
kind of fell into place at just the right time because I was working full time and I'd gone in on D-Day, June 6th, Monday, June 6th, and was called into the office and said, hey, old guy, we don't need your services anymore. Uh, you know, we got the young guy here. We don't need you anymore. So, you know, at the time I was making some money, but not really enough to live on. So I, that's when I, I came home. I spent the next several days finishing up the design on the Gatton CNC, uh, released it, and have never looked back. You know, the, the community and the support has been awesome. Uh, you know, like I said, the the I don't even think of a lot of the, you know, the people that buy stuff from me, I don't really think of them as customers. I think I'm more as friends, I guess, um, because that's, uh, you know, it, it's just been a great community with the, the Facebook groups and all that. And I, I so if I had to give a shout out, I'd, I'd give a shout out to all the folks that have supported me uh, over the years. Awesome, dude. All right. You guys, any final words here? Uh, no, no. Any shout outs you'd like to any, what are you guys up to anything as we, uh, we should just got the, uh, the, the, the D and M tool show, uh, in October at a weekend of the, uh, let me just have a quick look yeah, of the weekend of the, the 12th, 13th and 14th of October at Kempton Park race course, um, opposite Twicken rugby stadium. If anyone's there, I'll be doing a scroll saw demo with um, John Clothier will be there, Ben Crow from Crimson Guitars, uh, David Lowe, professional wood turner, will be there as well, uh, all doing demos. Um, so, yeah, if uh, if anyone's around that area, you can, I'm sure uh, you can come and say hi to us. Awesome, dude. Well, I hope that you – so I always say this with you, but it, it, I hope you film it. I will be because I'll have someone there with holding my camera. Well, thank goodness for that, dude. Jeez. Every time you do one of these adventures, I'm like, hey, dude, please film it. And yeah. it's also, I mean, come on, dude. It's also I'll, like, see if I can, I'll see if I can get over to Twickenham Stadium as well while I'm there because it's right opposite it. What was that under your breath? Doc? I said tw Twicken. That's fun to say. Twicken. Twi Twickenham. 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 Yeah, All that's right. a made-up word. Twickenham. Yeah, that doesn't sound British or English. That's made up. Oh, what the Twickenham, mate? Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doc. Yeah, dude. Any? What are you up to, dude? Are there any final? I'm just trying to give you guys. Okay, see, let me explain how the show. Uh, thing... I know, I know. I'm just trying to force it out of you now. Um. I, I'm not up to much these days. You guys know I started a new job. I've just been real busy with that and trying to keep the boys alive and fed and clean and not sick. So that's what I'm up to. Just general domestication type things. Nothing very exciting, unfortunately. This is one of the highlights of my week, unfortunately. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for letting me play along, kids. I think you guys underestimate, dude. You know, uh, before we go to hobby, I think you guys totally under. I mean, I don't know about Dave. You know, we just had this thing, so he's he's put in. You know, the the good effort here. Oh, you guys are here, so for goodness sakes. But I think you underestimate the value of human beings coming together and doing this sort of thing. You're like, okay, maybe I'm thinking, ponder. Dude, this is like the stuff, man. This is this is this is This is the stuff. We'll 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 show you how it's done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not underestimating it. I keep coming back. Yeah, but yeah, okay. It's like the highlight of my week, unfortunately. You remember yeah, that? I just wish I had something cooler to do. It's not there's this, you know, nothing against you all, but JP is showing us his microphone. I don't know why. Well, I appreciate that, Doc, JP, Javi. Well, um, uh, I recently, uh, as, as you know, Eloy, I recently bought a uh, lakefront property in central Florida. Mm -hmm. I'll be uh, doing my four-year move. I'll be over the next three years. I'm planning and designing, and I've pretty much got it all designed, the house. 
clearing out land and all that stuff, going there every month to maintain the land. I could use some help if anybody knows of a good uh, uh, architect out there uh, to uh, friend-type architect, not business. I'm doing all the plans myself, but I could definitely use some good advice and uh, and uh, someone to uh, brainstorm with if uh, anyone knows anybody out there or if anybody's just... Just interested um, in architecture and wants to see and by the plans. Friend, and, and by friend, he means for free. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe some hey, Chinese food. What comes around goes around, <laughs> my friends. It's just as simple as that. Yeah, it's a great-looking property. Um, wooded, very nice, uh, with a lake in the back. Very cool. Dotted with oaks. I've got the whole last acre is a bamboo forest. Yeah, and you know, you, you know and what, Harry? You've got a great voice for radio. Well, thank you. But my my face leaves a lot to be <laughs> much better than Mark Saunders. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I remember those. But by, by the way, yeah, you, you could actually see that. So Dave, I don't know if you ever saw when Javi, JP, Mark Saunders, and I uh there was there's there was a video, it's on my channel, and we well, they came down to see us, and we did Cuban dining one evening. And uh, did you see that? I think so. Yeah, I've seen that, I think. Yeah, so there was a little thing there where a lady comes over. It's just hilarious stuff. You know, uh, they, they hear Mark Saunders' voice. Javi's done voice, Mark Saunders, apparently. And there was this whole thing. And this is uh, JP doing a little jab. But you can check all that. That's yeah, Mark Saunders does have an incredible voice. But this waitress comes up just like like laser beam focus on Mark. And then, uh, and, and, uh, and she goes, I love your voice. And I go, what about my voice? You know? And then me, I'm here doing, Hey, Hey, look at me, look at me, you know, and nothing, nothing. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Okay. And continues to talk to Mark Saunders. Everybody else was invisible. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Good, good times. Um, so speaking of Mark Saunders, we're going to have him on the show next week. Incidentally. So, that's going to be a lot of fun because he's going to be, better be there. Yeah, you sh should be there. I mean, mm. I spent the night with him in a car. You don't, you well, shouldn't. Well, that come out, well, that come out weird. Yeah, you shouldn't say yeah. that on the show. It sound a little weird. <laughs> so, so you guys out there, um, look, you know, I have so much fun. It, it just, I'm always I always feel lucky to be able to interview people that do amazing things and you know and just go forward breaking down barriers and they do their thing you know I, I think that that's super inspirational for me selfishly actually it's for me because I'm gathering all these people saying these things that part of the community um, and it sort of energizes me so it's kind of in that way. It's kind of like a, a selfish little, little guilty pleasure thing, you know, to interview all these people, and and you do get inspired, you know, as opposed to being around people that don't do anything. They just uh, whatever, you know, like people that do things. It's exciting. Um, so that holds true for all of you guys out there, you know, us and me, hopefully to some extent. Uh, so I thank you guys, and I wish you a happy rest of the week. Oh, by the way, Doc, you never mentioned the podcast, none of that stuff. There's podcasts and stuff that we do. Oh, I, I absolutely did when I did my shout-out. I said, please, please check out Scratch Podcast. Well, that's... that's. I did that. That's, I, well, I that's what I'm up to. I, I have Mad Maker Show, and I have Scratch Podcast. You can also check out uh, Eloy and Mark Lindsay's deal. They're called Trampled Underfoot. That's right. Yeah, that's you, also you, a thing that happens. And then uh, JP does the podcast, Makers International, with uh, with the boom. I was thinking and, of doing a podcast. Is there like uh, five minutes in the week that you guys haven't taken up? Nope. <laughs> you can have you can have thirty seconds every other Thursday. I'll take the four thirty to four thirty five a.m. slot. To yeah, we'll, we'll, we can sign you up for a trial basis. We can see see what you do. Yeah, so a lot of cool stuff happening. And, you know, what can I say? I'm, I'm super. Thank you, Dave, for, for coming on, dude. Um, Thanks for having me, Eloy. It was an honor, dude. Thank you. And 
let's let's get out of here. I mean, what are we doing, right? Yeah. Later on. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.